To absolutely no one's surprise, Marvel's Loki is the most successful MCU project on Disney Plus to date. Bringing back Tom Hiddleston's God of Mischief for a television show was nothing short of genius. As great as the show is, there's even more genius underneath the show's surface. The production, the inspirations for the series, and Tom Hiddleston's journey bringing the character back to life, again, all show that this was probably one of the most interesting shoots in the entire MCU. Is there anyone more perfect for the role of Mobius than Owen Wilson? So far, my favorite part of Loki isn't the awesome mysteries, the energetic fight scenes, or the big references to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No, my favorite part of Loki is the outstanding chemistry between the titular god of mischief and his new buddy cop Mobius. That chemistry didn't just happen though, it actually required a lot of work from both Hiddleston and Wilson. The two actors starred together years ago in the film Midnight in Paris, which saw Wilson's Gill meeting famous writers like Hiddleston's F. Scott Fitzgerald. Now this is a writer, uh, Gill. Yes, Gill. That friendship came in handy once production on Loki started because poor Owen Wilson had no idea what was going on. Somehow he was one of like six people who had never watched a single MCU film. Instead of going to the comics or through the movies, he had Hiddleston lead him through a full day of Loki lectures on his character's arc through the extended franchise. By full day, I mean full. Evidently, Hiddleston even showed up late at night to Wilson's place because there were some important pieces of information he missed. Honestly, I think Disney Plus missed out on a whole other show here. Who wouldn't want to watch Tom Hiddleston explain Loki and the MCU to a confused Owen Wilson for like seven hours? If Loki doesn't look like it was complicated enough to shoot, a huge wrench was thrown right into the middle of production. That would, of course, be the COVID-19 pandemic, which brought pretty much every filming TV show and movie to a grinding halt. Eventually, the series was able to pick up shooting during the pandemic, taking special care to be safe. You can really tell in certain scenes where it looks like there should be dozens of extras in a scene, only for Loki to be practically the only character in the shot. While this was a major imposition for everyone, there was one person who went above and beyond to make sure filming went as smoothly as possible. Apparently, Tom Hiddleston showed what a lead actor should be all about by showing up on days he wasn't scheduled with so that he could read for his co-stars. It goes to show you that even though he may play a god of mischief, evidently Tom Hiddleston is a god of kindness instead. Loki might seem like it was a perfectly formed idea from the start, but the series actually started off with a very different premise. Originally, the series was going to feature Loki traveling through time, meddling with the affairs of humanity in the background. The biggest reminder of this original pitch for the series comes in the infamous D.B. Cooper scene. Apparently, the original version of Loki was going to feature more self-contained stories like that one, which would have shown how Loki influenced humanity across their history. I can't believe you were D.B. Cooper! Seeing as Marvel was already moving forward with the Eternals, which was all about gods who influenced human history from the background, it's safe to say that they made the right decision, focusing on the TVA and the competing Loki variants. Still, it would have been nice to see what that bet was that Loki lost to Thor, which led to the entire Cooper incident. Miss Minutes is one of the many parts of Loki that makes the series instantly iconic. It should come as no surprise that there was one very special inspiration for the TVA's cartoon mascot. Jurassic Park fans will no doubt remember the cartoon mascot, Mr. DNA, who explained how the dinosaur cloning process worked. Miss Minutes is a direct riff on Mr. DNA. If she sounds familiar too, that's because she's voiced by legendary voice actress Tara Strong. The famous artist responsible for the likes of Timmy Turner and Bubbles from Powerpuff Girls evidently auditioned several different versions of Miss Minutes, ranging from the charismatic one we see in the series to one who is much more like an emotionless artificial intelligence. I like the one they chose. There's nothing quite like a good school reunion. Seeing your old classmates after years apart can be a really rewarding experience. Evidently, Tom Hiddleston, Wonmi Musaku, and Gugu Mbatha-Ra all attended the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art within a few years of each other. This evidently made it hard to film the courtroom scene where Loki tries and fails to use his magic. <laughs> Wunmi Misako and Gugu Mbatara, who played the very serious Hunter B-15 and Judge Renslayer, kept catching each other's eye and cracking up through the whole scene. Hopefully our new Judge Renslayer gets a handle on it because it's quite possible we'll be seeing a lot more of her as the MCU keeps rolling along. Renslayer is a love interest to the villain Kang the Conqueror, who will be appearing on Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania and possibly this season of Loki. 
All of us have a favorite comic book character that we would love to make a TV show for. In fact, isn't it every fan's dream that they could write down all the things they love about a character and pitch a story to Kevin Feige? Well, Loki director Kate Heron is living all of our dreams right now. Loki was Heron's favorite comic book character to the point that she wrote a document around 60 pages long that went into her thoughts on Loki's character so far and his potential for the future. So if Heron really is that big a Loki fan, does that make the series the most successful fan series of all time? Nah, that's clearly The Mandalorian. If you were pretty sure that Loki really was gone for good when Thanos strangled the life out of him in Infinity War, you had plenty of company. Even Tom Hiddleston thought that Loki's story had come to its end when he finished filming the movie. It may have looked like Endgame's Loki scene was specifically designed to set up the Loki show, but apparently even that predated the announcement that there would be a TV series. It wasn't until Infinity War was about to premiere in theaters that Hiddleston was told they were planning a sequel series. According to the actor, while he thought Loki's story ended beautifully in Infinity War, he was excited about revisiting an older version of the character and charting a new course for him in an alternate timeline. So far, all of the Disney Plus shows have worn their influences on their sleeves. WandaVision was clearly a love letter to beloved sitcoms like Bewitched and Modern Family. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier clearly took inspiration from buddy cop movies like Lethal Weapon. The new show on the block, Loki, is no exception. The series takes obvious inspirations from strange classics like Brazil, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and Metropolis. So if you love the surreal nature of the TVA, check out those films to see the mind-twisting action that inspired it all. By far the most original thing about Loki is the introduction of the Time Variance Authority. Evidently, Kevin Feige and the Marvel gang have been interested in introducing the TVA to the MCU for quite a while, but there wasn't a good opportunity until this series. The organization was modeled after mindless bureaucracy and brutally boring temp jobs to juxtapose the high-concept world the TVA exists in. Not only that, but the interiors for the TVA are filmed in the Atlanta Marriott Marquis. The interior design of the hotel matched the look of infinite desks and infinite offices the show was going for. Even more than that, the hotel is famous for hosting Atlanta's annual comic convention, Dragon Con. Well, there's no doubt as to what all the cosplayers will be dressed as for Dragon Con 2021. Loki has at least 47 costumes in the series, so there will be a ton of options. Loki might seem like the most self-contained story the MCU has made yet, but apparently the show is going to be a big deal. The folks at Marvel have mentioned many times that Loki will be one of the big projects that kickstarts Phase 4. We already know that the show will set up Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Judging from that title, I assume that means the TVA fails to keep the timeline from unraveling into a full-blown multiverse. This change to the timeline will likely inspire the likes of What If, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and the new Spider-Man movie, which is supposed to explore the live-action Spider-Verse. You can't do any of that if you have only one universe to play in. Look, this has been a very enjoyable pantomime, but I'd like to go home now. The most important Loki fact of them all is that production is rumored to be underway for season 2 already. Apparently, the show will start filming in January of 2022, under the working title of Architect, so more Loki is on the way.